Hi everybody and welcome back to part 11 of the Tamiya 132 scale Mosquito build. Uh, last time, if you saw the last one, we managed to get the aeroplane up on all three wheels. The undercarriage completed, the two engines all installed. So this time, uh, for this part, I set myself the what I thought was a fairly straightforward objective of building the 20mm gun pack, uh, which sits in the belly of the aeroplane and I intend to show you how the uh, Tamiya unit goes together and also build and fit the replacement brassing unit. I thought that that would be fairly easy for this week but with things going on outside the shed and extra work that I've had to do this week uh, it's been a bit of a push so tonight's episode is a bit delayed. We're 24 hours out of sync this week so without any delay I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you how this unit goes together first of all the Tamiya parts straight from the box and then we'll do the brass in replacement. Okay I'll be uh, building the brass in uh, gun pack later on but as a comparison I want to just put together very quickly the Tamiya uh, 20 millimeter gun pack uh, which starts here on uh, section 61 of the instructions and starts with the ammunition boxes uh, we fit those into some frames, uh, put the cannons together and then finally fit the ammunition uh, feed chutes and the cooling pipes and so on. So not too much to do in the Tamiya kit. The brassing one's a little bit more complicated I think but as I said I just want to build this as a comparison and you can see how the two uh, compare at the end of the video. So uh, my hands are particularly grubby today, my apologies for that, uh, but I haven't had a lot of time in the shed this week because the uh, local farmer, I've been helping him out, myself and my wife, the uh, lambs are all appearing this uh, week. So we've, uh, it's a busy time on the farm next door, so we're, we're lending a hand there as well. And it's difficult to keep your hands clean when you're dealing with uh, sheep all the time. We'll uh, have to give them a good scrub later on. That's one of the ammo boxes. We make two of those. So uh, Tammy want us to open that hole up to one and a half millimetres and I don't have that drill in the toolbox so I'm just using this burr, conical burr just to open the holes out to the correct diameter. I'm not going to fuss too much about these, as I said it's only for comparison so if you were building this I think I would clean up some of these joints a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about them. So that's the first ammunition box, that's actually the forward one with the holes on the inside. The other one's going to be slightly different, that faces uh, to the back of the gun pack. But uh, I'll just make that other ammunition box up now. Okay, those are the two ammunition boxes. You can see the different position of the holes on the underside there, one for the front and one for the back. So 
So if I were to be fitting these onto the model, I'd be cleaning these uh, pieces up a little bit more. Mainly the seam lines, which are fairly faint, but they do benefit from being removed. Just a bit of a scrape like that. At this stage, with this frame which sits in between the two ammunition boxes, you just have to be careful to orientate it properly. There are a couple of lugs here on the back of the frame. They face backwards. So you've got to really pay attention at that stage to get that ammunition box and frame orientated in the correct way. The cannons themselves are all on the Q sprue and we just need to be careful again to get the right one for the right position. So to avoid any mix-ups I'll just build the four cannons separately. So this needs to be removed, this little piece at the side. And when we come to do the other side, I'm assuming we'll take the opposite uh, piece of plastic off. So that's where you've just got to be careful of uh, getting everything orientated properly. Tommy will give us another of their jigs to set the cannon barrels up, which is uh, this stainless steel part. So we'll uh, fit the inboard guns before we make the outboard ones. I just picked the wrong jig up there. This is the one for the inboard guns. It goes right up. Just make sure they're all sitting nice and square and flat. And whilst that's just drying with the jig in place, I'll make the outboard guns and they're done in more or less exactly the same way. So they'll sit further back 
on the mounting. So I'll just press on, make these outboard guns and then we'll come back and fit them to this assembly. Okay, these are the two outboard cannons and they fit onto the previous assembly in just the same way. So this is where the jig comes in, it'll just align all four cannon barrels. Okay, so I think they're all aligned. Those jigs do a really good job of making sure that everything's facing parallel and just aligning the jig with the ammunition box and the frames makes sure that they're all in the same uh, plane as well. So I'm going to leave that assembly to dry thoroughly and in the meantime I'll get the ammunition feeds out and we can get those attached to this assembly as well. So it's a similar story with these feeds that they're all slightly different and handed so I'll just build one at a time just to make sure I don't get them mixed up. I'm sorry that my hands are so grubby today, um, but that's because I've been doing a bit of manual labour, helping out on the farm next door. It's the middle of the lambing season, so it's a busy time. So myself and my wife just go and lend a hand over there, whilst the ewes are delivering the lambs and it's a dirty job so we both get a bit grubby whilst we're doing it. I was over there this morning I just haven't had time to get the dirt out of my fingers. We'll get a good scrub later on. So the two uh, narrow feeds go on the outboard guns and the wide feeds on the inboard guns. Even though I'm not putting this on the model it's just for interest that I'm building the Tamiya parts. I still can't stand leaving sprue gates on. The brass in feeds are a lot more detailed than this. They have the cannon shells uh, cast into them as well so uh, they'll look a little bit better than this. So that's gone together. It's just clipped together basically. It's fantastic how these parts go together. These are the gas pipes. I assume there's some sort of pneumatic uh, arrangement.
arrangement for the firing of the guns. Now I've made a goof there because these pipes should have gone on before I fitted the feeds. Uh, it's just a little bit awkward to get them in now. They will still go but it would have been easier to do those first. So in my haste I just didn't see that in the instructions. So that was uh, a bit trickier than it should have been but uh, it was my own fault for not looking at the instructions properly. It's pretty clear in the Tamiya instructions. Okay, so those pneumatic pipes are all individual. They're all different lengths and slightly different angles. So it's important to get them onto the correct cannon. And as I said before, it would be easier if you fitted the pneumatic pipes before the ammunition feeds. They'll fit either way, but it's just obviously easier to do it as directed in the instructions. So that's the Tamiya assembly completed. I'll take the jigs off in a moment. If I were fitting this to the aeroplane it would have taken quite a bit longer to build. I would have spent a bit more time on clean up and obviously the parts, uh, some of them are different colours so there would have been quite a bit of painting to do and there's uh, some decals to fit on the ammunition feeds. So probably another hour and a half's work to get those in a state where they would be going into the aeroplane. All that I'm going to do with this now is apply a coat of primer. It'll just enable you to see that assembly a little bit more clearly. Uh, but I'm not going to do anything else with it. And uh, we'll come back after we've done that, set it aside and we can make a start on the brassing assembly. As you can see that's uh, quite a nice assembly straight from the kit no additions to that at all and if it were painted up it would look fairly impressive I think so uh, that actually it's been useful building that because it'll just give me a bit of a reference for when we come to do the brassing uh, assembly just gives an idea of where all the parts need to go. So we'll crack the brassing box open, get the parts out and we'll get the brassing version made up now. Okay, so another day and it's pretty dark in the shed this morning. It's early but it's also dark because we've got a thick covering of snow on the skylight. So. Uh, I've got to have all the bench lights on this morning, which is pretty unusual really. But uh, let's get the brass in out. So this is set 63210, which contains exhausts, the wheels that we used last week, the 20mm cannon pack and the nose gun bay as well.
So a fairly straightforward brass inset. I just hope it fits because I've already assembled the Tamiya and that will be pretty difficult to paint accurately uh, if we have the same trouble with this brass insert as we did with the engines. I think overall there are probably about the same number of parts in this brass insert as there was in the Tamiya plastic and some of them obviously like these ammunition boxes are fully assembled in the Tamiya kit this came as probably five or maybe even six parts so uh, it's simpler in that respect but you've got the cleanup work of removing the resin from the block so the first job I'm going to do this morning is clean all these parts up and lay them out on the bench then we can see what we've got to do in terms of the first stages of painting and assembly I think most of these parts will need to be painted uh, before assembly except maybe for the guns I'll just find it easier to work out the plan uh, for how to go about building this uh, once the parts are all laid out in front of me so let's get started with that first of all okay so that's the parts count for the brass inset and I've counted 38 or so parts there the Tamiya equivalent uh, is in 50 parts and you get the reduction from things like the ammunition shoots in the resin set which are pre-assembled so that just saves a little bit but as I said we've got a slightly more difficult clean up with the resin so I'm going to do that now uh, but I'll be using a cutting disc in the motor tool so I won't be able to talk to you whilst I'm doing this but I'll just do a couple and then off camera I'll clean the rest up and we can start to do some assembly. Okay, so starting to clean these up now. The main casting blocks are off and I'm just going round with a sharp knife to get rid of the remaining excess material. These uh, frames, which are the Tamiya equivalents here, which are a much thicker gauge really than the resin, these are much finer. they need some careful handling because they're very fragile and as you know if you've used resin before it's fairly brittle material so while I'm working around this part and the rest of them uh, just a bit of a note about the video that I put out yesterday which was the Sherman the quick build Sherman tank and I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's given me some feedback on the different format for that video it was a video without any narrative in it and it was a bit of an experiment really for me uh, just to explore what works for people and what people prefer and the feedback which I really appreciate so far is that you prefer the narrative which uh, was a bit of a surprise to me uh, really to be honest and I suppose that's because I don't automatically assume that everything I say is very interesting so <laughs> I uh, did want to try out a different format and also uh, it's just so much easier in terms of workload uh, in when you're doing the editing because a lot of the editing work that you have to do preparing a video making a video like this is in the audio editing rather than the video so uh, it does save an awful lot of time not having the narrative in but 
uh, your feedback is that you prefer it and that's the important thing so generally I'm going to be sticking to the narrative presentation that's not to say that I won't do any more of the non-narrative videos because every now and again I just need to be able to get on build the kit quickly which I did with the tank it took about three or four days really to build that model the subject was a change as well which is refreshing and I think every now and again in the hobby you need to do something a bit different or at least I do uh, just to recharge the batteries a bit so that video was uh, a nice chance for me to just do the build not worry too much about the editing process and uh, I think it was worthwhile doing just to test the waters but thanks everybody for your constructive feedback I always like constructive feedback on what I'm doing uh, sometimes uh, it's not always possible to gauge what people want uh, and just varying it a little bit now and again is a good way of doing that so thanks everybody for being so helpful and constructive in developing the format of the videos I really appreciate that so you can see here how much work this is taking to uh, clear out these uh, frames so I'm just going to press on it's probably going to take a good hour or so to do all the parts for this gun pack so I'll come back to you when that's all ready and we can start to get them primed and painted up with all this uh, flash removed uh, the part becomes fairly fragile so the more you remove the more careful you have to be when handling these parts they'll be very easy to snap at this stage I'll just sand the bottom of this part wet that'll just minimize the amount of resin dust I'm going along the bottom of this frame rather than from side to side because that just uh, reduces the stress on it okay that's the part cleaned up which took probably nearly half an hour just to clean that one resin part up the equivalent Tamiya part probably takes 30 seconds so I'm going to carry on and do the rest of these now and once they're all fully cleaned up we'll come back and see what we've got to do next this is quite unusual for brass in parts we've got two air bubbles and what I'm going to do is put some super glue in there some CA because what I'm concerned about is that the sides will collapse and it will spoil the appearance of the part so this will just stabilize that very thin outside edge just a squirt of accelerator Okay, so that's all sanded smooth and I think that's rescued as I said it's quite unusual I don't think I've ever had to do that before on a brass in piece I wouldn't have wanted to get all that painted for the uh, air bubble to collapse <sighs> and I'd have to start again so That'll work fine now. 
These are the Canon breeches with separate barrels. Uh, need pushing, which just need to be pushed in to the front like that. You just need to adjust the connection a little bit. It's a little bit long for the hole in the breech. So to get a nice tight fit, just trim a little bit off the end. One thing that I don't like about resin barrels is that it's often difficult to get them straight. This one here that I've assembled is twisted and bent. So I'm going to have to straighten that out with some warm water or a hairdryer, something like that. But I'll just assemble them first. The inboard guns aren't so bad, the barrels are fairly straight. It's the two longer ones, the outboard barrels. So I'm going to have to do some work on those. You can see particularly the one on the right hand side is quite a long way out. I'm going to have to straighten those up. So I'll try a hairdryer first of all to remove the kink which is just here. See if we can get it looking a bit better than that. So just a gentle heat up with the hairdryer. And actually what I often find happens is that the resin adopts its correct shape just under the warmth so without a lot of pushing and pulling around that's come nice and straight again it'll be easier to see when we've got all four barrels mounted to see whether or not there's any further adjustment to make but that's better than it was Okay, we're uh, getting there with these. I've done all the ammunition boxes. The frames are all cleaned up. The four cannons all done. Feed chutes cleaned up as well. They were fairly straightforward. The outboard cannons have these caps on the end where uh, the barrel goes through the bulkhead at the front of the cannon bay and we've also got these little pieces here to cut out and fit to the rear of the breech. But apart from that there's no more assembly on the actual cannons themselves. So just put the end cap on. It's pretty clear how far down the barrel that goes. There's a little stop on the resin barrel so we're not going to get that in the wrong place hopefully so that's all the preparation done which has taken probably about two and a half hours just to do those parts whereas I think all together to prepare and actually build the Tamiya unit took about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes something like that so quite a bit more work involved with the resin overall. These tiny parts here are the mounting brackets for the cannons That's the mounting and I hope that that's going to go together all right because it's quite a different construction to the Tamiya. Tamiya provide some very solid pegs on the underside of the guns. Edward resin relies on 
uh, the mounting at the front the bracket at the back here that we've just fitted and also the ammunition chute which clips on the side like that and down onto the outside of the ammunition box so it's quite a bit flimsier construction than the Tamiya so we'll just have to see how it goes together so the next step is having prepared all these parts is to give them some primer that'll show if uh, any further work needs to be done to them I think I've cleaned them up as well as I can see at the moment but primer might just reveal one or two other bits and pieces that need doing so I'll go over to the booth and get those done now the uh, primers really brought the detail out of these cannons uh, compared to the Tamiya ones they're much finer and with a lot more uh, molding on them and they should respond really nicely to some dry brushing we'll give that a go later on once we've given them the uh, base coat of paint so uh, the next step is to get some paint on these parts the uh, frames are all in black the ammunition boxes are a red brown colour the feed chutes are going to be done in duralumin we have an interior green section here for the duct which supplies the uh, compressed air I think it is uh, the guns themselves will be a combination of dark iron I'll use uh, some lacquer paint for that and then a dry brushing with some uh, lighter aluminium type colour or a silver just to bring out some of that detail so uh, I'll get all those done now and we can then start to hopefully do a bit of assembly okay so the first this is the first basic cut of paint on each of these parts uh, we need to bring them to life a little bit with some uh, shading and so on uh, but at least that's the main colours on the ammunition boxes I've done in Mr Hobby uh, red brown uh, which is a gloss colour it's actually designed for tanks apparently but I can't understand why you'd have a gloss but there we are it's, it is gloss and it's come out very shiny a bit too shiny but I'm not going to mat these down completely I want them to have a sheen on so I'll probably use a light sheen or a semi-gloss uh, varnish to finish these off Cannons I've done with Tamiya lacquer paint this is uh, dark iron and that's as specified in the Tamiya instructions these also need a bit of highlighting as well which I'll do in a lighter colour I still haven't managed to get the kink out of this gun for some reason it's gone back to where it was before so it's strange it's nice and straight from the top but it just waves around a little bit uh, when viewed from the side so I might need to do a little bit more on that yet all the other ones are fine though so it might not be that noticeable once uh, we get all the guns installed so just start to get a bit of shading on these parts so with the parts that I've been painting green on this aeroplane I've just lightened it slightly with some XF76 it's grey green and it just brings the raw interior green or cockpit green as Tamiya call it it just brings it a bit closer to RAF interior green which was more of a grey colour really 
So just a very light dry brushing just to catch the edges of the duct. Thankfully those air bubbles that we suffered on this piece uh, they've been disguised now with that filling that we did so that's not a problem that's all I'm going to do with that it just uh, takes some of the uniformity out of the colour and just adds a bit more interest to it for the cannons I'm just going to give them a very light dry brushing with some gun metal. This is lacquer, Tamiya lacquer gun metal. So we'll just see how this goes on. I'm hoping that it'll just get the detail to pop out a little bit without overdoing it. I don't want the whole gun to be gun metal coloured. The dry brushing just adds to the detail, it just brings out detail that you've not noticed when you just have the part painted in a base colour. So that's the uh, first step in the process, bit of dry brushing. It's probably quite difficult to pick that out. The next colour I'm going to use is titanium gold to pick out the uh, drum here. So this is uh, Tamiya lacquer paint which I really like to use for painting metallics. The next step with these uh, ammunition shoots or feeds is to pick out the shell casings in brass and for that I'm using some Mr Metal colour brass and this is the first time actually I've used Mr Metal paints and I've been pretty impressed with how it went on on the first three that I did here. It's a nice uh, dense colour, very metallic looking and it goes on nice with a brush. Often metallics don't go on so well I find but I'm pretty impressed with these. It's nice and thin but the paint's pretty opaque as well. So it's easy to get it to run into the detail uh, whilst maintaining the density of the colour. These resin uh, ammunition feeds are a big improvement on what's provided in the Tamiya kit. You can see that the feeds are bare. We just have the slots in them. So there's no uh, shell detail at all in the Tamiya kit. So hopefully they'll be uh, a big improvement. There's still a bit of work to do on these yet 
I'm going to add a weathering wash, uh, probably in dark brown, and that'll just bring the shells out a bit more. And I might have to go back in and pick the individual shell cases out in a bit more brass. But hopefully, if I don't uh, overdo the wash, I should retain the brass colour. So you can see the difference that the wash brings out, it just uh, makes some depth in the shoots and they look a lot better with uh, the brown. I think black would probably be a little bit too stark. Uh, this uh, dark brown I like a lot on uh, metallic surfaces. Uh, it works well with green interiors as well. Uh, but I've only just managed to get hold of this. It's not commonly available, really, in the UK. It's not the sort of thing that you'd just go into the local hobby shop and pick up off the shelf. Uh, I think this came from Poland. This is a very light dry brushing on the black frames with some German grey. Very light, I don't want to really alter the colour that much. So I'm just catching the edges of those frames, picking out the little bits of uh, bulk detail on them. Just a bit of dry brushing on the ammunition boxes. Just to catch the edges again. So this is just a lightened shade of the kind of brick red colour that I used. It was a mix of my own actually, red and from red and brown paint. So I can't give you the exact uh, formula for it but it doesn't really matter too much these are fairly well hidden underneath the cannons I do like dry brushing it really alters the appearance of parts like this It just seems to pop the detail out a bit more. The uh, shade that I'm using for this, it looks so peculiar colour really. It's uh, I've just lightened the base colour with some wooden deck tan. It looks pink really, but it works. It just uh, picks up the edges. But you really have to go steady with it. Obviously we don't want these to look pink. Okay, everything's ready. Uh, we'll see if we can get this together now.
Okay, we can uh, do some assembly now. So we'll start by fitting the ammunition boxes onto this central frame. Just remember to get the right ones on the right side. The last of the frames goes on this side of the ammunition boxes and this one will carry the mountings for the outboard cannon. So I had a bit of trouble getting this to line up when I dry fitted it so I just want to test it again. I don't want to commit to any cement and then find that I can't get it on. No, that's alright now. So that appears to be all lining up all right. Happy enough with that. This is a duct, uh, which I think is a compressed air duct. So I'm just gonna check the fit of this unit into the uh, cannon bay on the underside of the aeroplane now just before I get the guns positioned That wasn't a bad idea to do that because it doesn't fit This duct is too deep Not by much, but we are going to have to modify that a little bit So if there's one thing that I would say about using these brass insets is just to make sure you test fit everything because uh, surprisingly for me the fit of some of the parts that I've used uh, in the brassing has been very poor. So after quite a bit of messing about that will now fit but I've taken quite a bit off the bottom of this duct probably at least three millimeters which is a lot really for the uh, Edward Brassin to be out. So knowing that the ammunition box unit will fit now I'm happy to go ahead and put the guns on. I mentioned earlier on in the video that I was a bit concerned about these mounting brackets and the way that they fit into these uh, frames here. But actually they're quite a secure fixing. They do retain the gun or the cannon and I'll get a stronger fixing when I come to put the ammunition feed chute on. These are all individually numbered parts because the shells are moulded into here and obviously we've got the pointy end if you like of the shell facing forwards so we've got to get them the right way around. So I'll attach these with some super glue down at the bottom it's quite a secure tab on the bottom of the ammunition feed. So we're doing the two outboard guns first. I'm not going to glue these permanently into position yet. I'll actually do that once the 
whole assemblies in the underside of the aircraft and I know that the front end is going through the bulkhead okay. And the inboard guns can go in as well. And the inboard feet, they bridge over the outboard gun. Bit of uh, finger trouble there, I've just knocked the gun out of position. You can see this is all a bit precarious until, probably until we get it into the aeroplane. These are the uh, air pipes which go from the duct to each of the guns. Uh, so I've got to do those pre-painted because I'm not going to be able to get a brush through. They actually feed through the uh, ammunition feeds here at the front and onto the outboard guns. Okay, so these are the tricky ones that go underneath the chutes. Okay, so that's all the pipes in. I'll just give them a little touch up here and there. Uh, but I think that assembly has gone together reasonably well. The question now is, will the guns go up to the bulkhead? I've got a feeling that the outboard ones might be a bit long. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do if that is the case. So again, this is just a test fit. I'm not going to be gluing this into position just yet. I think actually that's going to be all right. The outboard guns are a little bit too long in the barrel but I'm not sure if I can do anything about that really. Okay so uh, I'm going to have to have a go at getting this in now. I'm just removing the chin plate there just to make sure that all the guns are located through, which they are. So once I'm happy with the positioning of the cannons, I'm going to secure them at the bulkhead end. Because at the moment the only fixing that I've got on that is this central frame onto the side of the uh, Bombay and Cannon Bay. 
so we need a little bit more than that and this is our chance now to get the cannons all lined up orientated properly I am going to have to shorten these a little bit they're sitting too far back they're pushing all the uh, feeds out of position so that's not uh, working quite right it's probably about two millimeters okay so after a bit of uh, pushing and shoving around the uh, gun pack is fitted uh, not the easiest thing to do it's uh, certainly not as straightforward as the Tamiya was to fit I test fitted the Tamiya gun pack in place and it was a perfect fit as you'd expect uh, but this uh, brass inset needed quite a bit more modification to it so the outer gun barrels are too long so if you're doing this yourself uh, you might need to just shorten the outer gun barrels uh, but test fit it obviously before you did that just be aware that they're likely to be a bit long but we've got it fitted in now the next thing we've got to do here in this area is to fit the uh, sides of the fuselage here just to fill this space up and the bomb bay will be completed obviously with the bomb load which goes here at the back of the bomb bay uh, with a couple of I think 500 pounders to fit in the back there so I enjoyed making those actually they're uh, quite an interesting thing to put together uh, and certainly this gun pack from the brass inset if you've got the patience to uh, do the extra detailing on it uh, and make this necessary adjustments to get the thing to fit then I think overall it's a very worthwhile addition to the model so I'll get some photographs for the end of the video and we'll think about what we've got to do next on this kit okay so that's how it went and the underside of the aeroplane as you can see is coming together now just the bombs to fit and the sides of the uh, bomb bay uh, wall the fuselage to finish off we also have this belly plate to fit as well and in this belly plate I've got some replacement brass uh, cannon barrels uh, which will replace the plastic ones supplied in the Tamiya kit so hopefully that should uh, look nice when it's done in terms of the brassing replacement for the Tamiya gun pack I think overall I'm glad I fitted it it's uh, not without its problems there are one or two fit issues that I pointed out during the video but they're fairly easy to overcome and particularly if you're forewarned uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue if I was doing this again uh, I'd obviously be able to circumvent some of those problems knowing where they're gonna fall so I hope identifying them in this video will help any of you that are putting this replacement into your 32 scale Mosquito. So that's it for this week. Uh, next time I'm not going to commit to doing an awful lot next week. As you know, uh, if you've been watching over the last week, the things are pretty busy around here at the minute. So I'm not going to set myself a massive target for next week. I think I'll probably just do the work that I've outlined already with finishing the Bombay area off. And I might take a look at some of these uh, 303 machine guns in the nose of the aeroplane as well. We'll see how we go. It depends on uh, what time I've got in the shed next week. So with that modest target, I hope next week, I might get uh, time to complete the premiere on Friday night as usual. That's the intention anyway. If not, I'll have to let you know as I did uh, this week. So until then everybody, look after yourselves, enjoy your modelling, stay safe and I'll see you in another few days time. Bye for now.
Thank <laughs> you.